I'm not just like defaulted to your girl, you get a salad. Um, Donovan, what would, you do if, what would you do if, <laughs> if your lady got fat? Excuse me, how unrealistic are we? Okay, so we're gonna continue listening because it actually gets worse. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Flow with Chloe channel. My name is Chloe and I am ready to get into it today. We have a spicy topic today that I'm just going to straight up get into. This is a reaction response to a podcast that I was watching the other day where I straight up, like I was at the gym and I straight up just like stopped, went over, walked to my phone because my phone was, you know, Typical gym style, thrown on the other side of the gym, just in a random place. And I go to my phone and I'm just sitting there and I'm just like looking at this, like looking at this YouTube video I was watching, being like, wait, like, are you serious right now? Like, is this really what's going on? Is this really what's being said? I was appalled and I wanted to create a response video to it because I know that things like this are said all the time. And being someone who dealt with multiple eating disorders growing up and then who obviously now is in the field of helping coach and mentor people out of eating disorders, um, it was just quite shocking. Um, and so uh, let's just dive into this. Um, I have to do a little introduction first because I understand that YouTube is big and there's so many different types of videos that someone could be watching so the videos that i watch is probably not the videos that you watch so i watch a lot of videos on kind of um how do i put this watch a lot of videos on like social commentary i watch a lot of videos on um, masculine and feminine uh, relationship dynamics i watch a lot of videos on kind of um like the red pill community i watch a lot of videos and that whole like you know what's a high value woman like what's a high value man like those type of things i'm kind of just in the season of my life of i want to be married i want to have kids i'm dating around and that stuff is just very interesting to me i also listen to a lot of business stuff it's all kind of correlated um but i like i said i listen to a lot of kind of like red pill um red pill podcast and youtube channels and stuff like that now for those of you guys this is why i was like i need to kind of say first uh, for those of you guys who have no idea what this is um you might be familiar with like the fresh and fit podcast you might be familiar with uh value entertainment you might be familiar with uh just curly things um or the roommates podcast all these people are kind of in that like nanosphere red pill community and basically what it is um if you've seen the matrix you know that there's this whole thing with like do you take the red pill do you take the blue pill and the blue pill is kind of like innocence right like i'm just slipping into the status quo i'm not um i'm not questioning anything i'm gonna take the blue pill red pill is like no i'm gonna be awakened to the craziness that's going on and i'm gonna understand it so that i can get myself out of it so the red pill community in terms of you know the manosphere and the dating and all of that is really about seeing um seeing relationships in a different way seeing um man's um work in the world in a different way if that makes sense so the red pill community is more like okay what do men go through what do you need to do to be like a high value man like how do you kind of get yourself out of this matrix um and how can you see things like the topic of feminism and stuff from a different perspective um and anyway so that's what the content is. I don't know if I just explained that well, but again, I'm kind of hoping that some of you guys have at least heard the name Andrew Tate and kind of know what I'm talking about. I think Andrew Tate is like the epitome of like the red pill community. Now you may hate him. We all have our own opinions. We all have our own like beliefs and everything. So I'm not getting like political in that way. Um, in this, in this, uh, in this YouTube video. Um, but just, whether you like him or not, 
that's the Red Pill community. That's the podcast that I was listening to. It's kind of in alignment with that. Okay. So I was watching this podcast thing and it's uh, titled, let's see, I have it here. It's titled Heated, Red Pill Men vs. High Value Woman and Andrew Tate Debate. Great. I love that. I love these type of like drama podcasts. Like not gonna lie, I kind of really want to be on one, especially like uh, I would love to be on like Fresh and Fit because like the girls that they get on that show, pretty much they just take all these, they're in Miami, so they take all these like girls from off the street in Miami and, and they talk about the difference between like men and women and dating and all these things, right? And uh, just bless those little girls' hearts. Some of them are ridiculous. Like literally I look at it and I'm like, is that a true representation of like women of our day and age? Because that's just scary to me, to be honest. So I've always just wanted to like go on that podcast and be like, here I am just like a normal, very grounded, very just like healthy, very just authentic. I don't, and this is no judgment, you know, but it, they're all wearing like the big fake nails, the eyelashes, the, the boob jobs. They're just, it's just like that type of vibe. I'd love to go on there and just like share my kind of like perspective on relationships and high value men, high value women, all of that. So I'm going to share with you guys now a clip from this podcast that literally had me like staring at my phone like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening. And then we're going to chat about it and I'm going to share my thoughts. Um, Donovan, what would, you do if, what would you do if, you're, if your lady got fat? And what would you say? Like, walk me through that conversation. Yeah, she'd be fucking gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I made it. <laughs> You'd have to warn her first, no? But there is no warning. I wow. Made it, I made it clear to her Shots from the start. That if you, I am not well, friends with you, especially if you're fat. That's right. <laughs> I, made it, I made it very, I made it very, very, I made it abundantly clear to her that if she gets out of shape, she is that if she gets out of shape, she's fucking gone. And here's the thing, here's yeah. the reason why. Oh, I love it. Because I pay her personal trainer $2,400 a month wow. to make sure she stays fit. <laughs> brother, just pay me a G, I'll take care of it, brother. <laughs> I got it, I think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think I'm good. And her, her personal trainer is female, by the way. We had to make has sure that. To be. Yeah, yeah, has, has to be. Yeah, has to be. Okay. But, but, but these are the conversations. Next thing she's banging Hans for $2,400. <laughs> 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 but these are the conversations that men need to have with women. So, they're, yeah. and they're, men are afraid to say stuff like that because they don't want to get canceled. Oh my God, you're bullying! Listen, it's not bullying if it's true. Yeah, and also when you've been canceled twelve times, what's a thirteen? <laughs> yeah, Baker's yeah, right. exactly. Point, so yeah, right? that's the conversation. Gotcha. If she gets MLD, fat, like, what do you say to your woman if she gets fat? No, I'm, obviously she's eighteen, fit virgin. I mean, six the whole thing, trying. six four. She <laughs> never would. Okay, so we're gonna continue listening because it actually gets worse. Um, but um, I just wanted to pause here and first make sure that we have the scene set. So all of these people are supposedly very high value men. Um, oh God, there's like so many YouTube videos that need to go before this for me to start explaining things. Um, basically, they're high earners, they're high income earners. Um, they take on a very masculine kind of energy and role. And again, I'm talking about all kind of red pill community here, okay? So we're talking about very just traditional um, heteronormative relationships. Um, and anyway, so their high value is what they're claiming here. And um, <laughs> And it's just so shocking to me that he, one, has such strict rules for his girlfriend, apparently. Like, oh, if she gains weight, she's out. Like, no, no, that was a conversation we had. Like, you gain weight, like, God forbid you, like, grow up and you, like, maybe have kids and your body size shifts and changes. Like, nope, you're out. I'm like, whoa. And first off, like, just to point out the obvious here, um, he's not exactly in shape himself, and so I find it very interesting that he has such high standards for his woman, and yet isn't even abiding by them himself. And I, and I know that, like, the whole point of Red Pill community here is that they really believe that, like, you know, a woman's value is in her looks because men are a lot more visually, um, stimulated versus 
the other way around. We women are more like, can you protect? Can you provide? Like I was talking to my friend Jen the other night. She just went on this date. It went really well. And like, she's really excited. And I love how like the conversations I ask is like, what is his job? Um, <laughs> what car was he driving? And like, what else does he plan on doing in his career? And blah, blah, blah. It's like, we talk about those things. And when, you know, conversely, men are talking about like, oh, I just met like a girl. They're usually like, oh my gosh, how hot is she, right? And that's just, that's just kind of that dynamic again and very heteronormative um, masculine feminine kind of uh, relationships. The men tend to be more visually oriented. So I, I get that they're saying that like, okay, maybe he can be high value, but not in shape, but the woman has to be, but this is where it starts to get really cr cringy. Um, it was just continue on before I like say but God forbid, well, I, walk me through that combo. No, I, I was dating I a girl can't. and she had started to gain a little bit of weight because when girls date me, you know, they start living that they, good they, life. They live good. That's yeah, that hot dude good, life. You know, you just have pasta for dinner. Resorts, five star <laughs> meals, losing the creme de la creme sure. in Tokyo, right? <laughs> but when they start, every girl that gets into a relationship with me, first of all, I'm like, you got to get a gym membership, no matter what. Are you paying for it? No, fuck no. You're not paying for it? No. Get okay. Well, the reason I pay for Devin's personal trainer is because yeah. she paid her dues. Right. She earned gotcha. the right to, yeah. she earned the right to that, yeah. So a girl that dates me has to exercise and has to have an awareness of calories in. Mm -hmm. Calories in, calories out, right? You're a fitness girl, you understand the importance of that, right? Yeah. And there's a girl I was dating and she started getting a little bit of weight. And so for Christmas, I got her some Lululemon tracksuit. I got her some exercise mm -hmm. stuff and I got her a scale. And I was just like, Donovan, I don't know why I'm having this like image of you like uh, like uh, like like you've gained one pound like that you're measuring and, that's and it you're out bitch true. I told you <laughs> one <laughs> pound listen I got a story have, take another bite of that fucking cookie I did you know my rules I, just, I, just, I, just, I feel on, like I quick feel like, story yeah. quick story I actually did a YouTube video on this there was one night Devin comes to bed and I was like and I told her I said you're looking a little puffy get on the scale puffy oh you better believe it she was 135 pounds i said until you get down to 128 you were on dick detention she lost the weight in three weeks wow mm -hmm. no shit. dick no yep. dick wow no sir yeah. no sir because it's nobody wants to lose that down of the dick i mean everyone <laughs> well here's the thing hello you know, well, listen here's the thing if you don't get my dick you're not getting my commitment eventually you know what you understand it wasn't about the sex for me I if like you can't keep me sexually interested then there's no need for relationships there's a difference I, I learned this from donovan sharp i'll say it right to camera there's a difference between an ultimatum and a choice damn it is make it oh. mind you i've already watched this like 10 times so my reaction is like I already know what's coming and oh my gosh. Wow, I'm like, I don't know why my eyes got really watery. It's, I think it's just, I think I feel, I feel a lot for the pressure that us women have to maintain a certain size and shape and to look a certain way. And I think that this is literally like, this was super, super toxic and sad to hear. The idea that he's telling his girlfriend who weighs 135 excuse me how unrealistic are we that's like first off depends on someone's height right but like 135 like oh my gosh <laughs> like that's not a heavy weight that's not like a wow this girl is unhealthy this girl is like Oh, I just, I don't even know what to say here. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Like, I think people have this idea that the girls need to be like 120 pounds or 115 pounds. And I'm like, yeah, if they don't want to be fertile, sure. <laughs> like if they want to wreck their health and wreck their metabolism by, you know, being at a 14 BMI, then sure, like they can drop down to the like 114, 115, 120, whatever. But like most women are not going to be healthy at that weight. And like 135, let's say someone's like, you know, five foot two, five foot four, whatever, five foot five, like 135 is a very like, just like regular, regular, old, healthy, fertile BMI. And it's just like shocking to hear that he was like, nope, I'm not going to have intercourse with you unless you drop down to 128. If my man did that to me, I'd be like, what the F? Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Like, no, 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 no,
<laughs> again, like I get that these guys are visual creatures, but here's the thing, ladies, and I want to be very, very, very clear here with you guys so that you don't get sucked into this type of content thinking, oh my gosh, see, that's why I need to like, I need to um, like restrict and I need to lose weight in order to attract a man. Your attractiveness is way more than your body weight. So are men more visual? Yes, sure, totally. Okay, we, can, we can't fight that. Just like we shouldn't fight the fact that like, yeah, as women, most of us are like, hey, can you provide? Like, what's your, what's your, what's your income level here? Like, okay, it, I get that. It's, that's how it is. I think the point is to be attractive in the way of like you're putting yourself together, not a number on the scale right that's like where this just goes like so toxic i'm like yes dress well understand your body size and shape understand what's going to look good on you understand your colors um you know understand how to put on your makeup well put lotion on your skin so it's nice and soft and supple like do those things do your hair right not in a toxic like you always have to look totally dressed up to the nines but in a like yeah okay like we're all kind of visual creatures, especially since like social media, right? Where we're constantly just bombarded with images of people. But again, it's not thinking that you need to be a certain size and shape to be attractive. Rather, it's understanding one, my inherent attractiveness is my personality, my character traits, like who I am as a person. But then on top of that, sure like i'm wearing this top right now because i'm just like i don't know i just love this color right now i love the tube top i love that it opens up like my um my collarbones and my shoulders and i love the gold jewelry like okay but i didn't eat half a banana for breakfast so that i could like you know maintain to this unrealistic standard of weight so that i'm more attractive like I think what's really attractive and what shows in someone's physical appearance of that like attractiveness is health, is you have a strong, healthy metabolism. You've been nourishing yourself. I think the times in my life where I looked the least attractive were the times where I was severely restricting and like, oh, my like face sunk in and you could see my ribs and my skin was dry and scaly and like that was just... That was unattractive because I just wasn't metabolically healthy. I didn't even have hormones. I didn't have a period for 11 years. Like, and so I see all these girls like literally killing themselves at the gym, restricting, doing all these things to try and maintain these standards that are being set, right? And then they end up losing their sex drive. They end up losing their fertility, which is like, you know, that whole thing of like guys tend to like younger women in the whole kind of like, again, this is, if you're not in the red pill community, you're, you're probably not understanding what I'm saying. But again, in the red pill community, it's talked a lot about how like men tend to value youth and women because just evolutionarily speaking, biologically speaking, um, their fertility is the highest when they're younger. Like a 22 year old has a higher fertility and a higher chance of healthy pregnancy than a 38 year old. That's just how it is, right? Um, and so it's like, they want her for her fertility, but then they're putting on these unrealistic standards of like, hey, a lot of women at 128 are not gonna be fertile. Like that is crazy to me to hear that he has like a number for his woman. Cause I'm like, that could be a number that dips her into energy debt, that makes her lose her period, that makes her lose her fertility. So where's her attractiveness then? Because I thought her attractiveness was like her fertility, her youthfulness, right? me being recovered and being healthy and nourishing my body well i literally like i can't even tell you how much like attention i get from males now i walk into a club i go out to dinner i even step into the gym and like okay this is gonna sound bad i'm not being like egocentric but like I, I walk in places and people look right like people come and talk to me i have guys coming up to me asking for my number all the time um so that's like started happening to me um, after I went through recovery and I gained my curves and I like was a well-nourished woman back when I was just like shrinking myself because I thought that that was the only way that a man was gonna love me was if I shrunk myself that was the time that I got zero, like zero you guys I wasn't ever dating anyone I was like socially very awkward when it came with relationships I think I had my first kiss when I was like 25 years old like literally like I was not in a place of feeling youthful and healthy and fertile and any of that 
and it showed and it really showed and so so many of these girls again they like restrict and they lose all this weight to only lose all of those things that the men are saying are attractive it, but it puts us in the situation of like oh my gosh like, what am i supposed to do and then this comment that this guy said about like i got when you know i was noticing my girlfriend was getting a little pudgy which again it's like let us let us breathe like we have hormones and we have different seasons of our life and like yeah there are moments where you know we might gain weight and that's kind of a part of us stepping into patriarchy of like i'm not supposed to look like i was 16 and have a thigh gap like i'm a 30 year old woman i'm not supposed to look like that so don't put that like pressure on me but it was just crazy to hear that he was like i got her a lululemon suit i got her a scale i got her all these things and i'm like oh my gosh like i would be furious if my boyfriend oh that's the oven i'm making coconut covered shrimp like fried coconut tempura shrimp <laughs> that makes sense from Trader joe's it's like a bomb um but the oven's finally hot for that so i'll go put that in in a minute but um <laughs> like i would literally be so unbelievably like shocked at a boyfriend i mean i honestly especially with my history i'd be like i'm sorry we're broken up like for, you are going to force me to um and that's the thing it's not to hey i'm inviting you to be more healthy and to step into the best version of you it's i am forcing you to stay at, at this ideal that i have of what you should look like i'm going to force you to go work out i'm going to force you to um weigh yourself every morning and i'm like that's the start for many women of an eating disorder and trust me, trust me, you don't want to be dating someone with an eating disorder. Trust me, you want to be dating someone with a very healthy relationship with food so that they can nourish your whole family and help your kids have a very healthy relationship with food. You don't want to go through the whole experience of having a daughter or a son, right? Go through an eating disorder. It's not a fun thing. It costs a lot of money. My parents sent me to inpatient treatment and literally spent like over a hundred thousand dollars just like helping me get treatment with therapists and you know dietitians and with um, inpatient treatment and all of that stuff and then on top of it just seeing me kind of lose my life lose my personality and my vitality and all of that like you don't want that i promise you for the men out there i promise you that you want a woman who understands the importance of good nutrition Good nutrition meaning not I ate 1,000 calories and it was all just like fruits and vegetables. Good nutrition as in like understands how to actually nourish her body for proper metabolic health, for fertility, and for overall just like vitality. And that's not going to be just, you know, eating 1,000 calories. That's going to be her understanding her metabolism. Hey, I need more food than that. And like... If you're getting a steak, I should be getting a steak too. I'm not just like defaulted to your girl, you get a salad. Like, no, that's going to lead to so much metabolic shutdown for so many women. It's just absolutely bonkers in my mind. Bonkers. If this irks you, like, please just write down in the comment. Like, this video literally was like, <laughs> I don't even know. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually hearing this. And again, coming from high value men, no, 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 a high value man, again, understands that his woman's health, top priority, top priority, top priority, her health, not just abiding by a beauty standard. So we as women need a higher body fat percentage, men. <laughs> we as women need our curves. We actually, you know, that lower like pooch, the lower little belly pooch that these men might be super pissed about that their woman got. Hey, guess what? We need that to provide you your children. <laughs> like, and here's the thing, like I, I, I get it where they're coming from. Um, of like, okay, you wanna take care of yourself. And I know that we have two things going on here in this world, right? We have an eating disorder where girls are starving themselves and really harming themselves to obtain these beauty standards and everything. And then we have the opposite side here, right? Where we don't understand nutrition, we um, don't understand how to properly nourish our body and we're you know, getting outside of the range of healthy weight, right? That's not a specific number, it's a range. This is a very, um, a very touchy topic but yeah I'm even though I'm an eating sort of recovery mentor I'm not gonna go ahead and be like yes you should be 400 pounds 
that's never been my like intention with recovery with my girls. I'm like, I want to get you to a place where you're healthy, where you look and feel your best. And yeah, that's probably going to have us rewiring our idea of what looks our best, right? Because we might be so attached to those. I have to be the size zero. And I'm like, honey, you might just be really gorgeous and pretty and a lot better off just being a size six or a size eight, right? Like anyways, so I get what they're saying of like they want someone who is, you know, again, taking care of herself. I think it just goes about it the wrong way. And that's where I got caught in my eating disorders because I was like, okay, I want to, you know, I want to take care of myself. I want to, um, I want to feel strong. I want to feel fit. I like all of that. But I just knew that the only way to get there was to restrict. Like, I, I didn't know any other way. I didn't understand anything else. I just thought lower calories and exercise more. That ended up in eating disorders and energy debt and amenorrhea for 11 years and, you know, infertility and osteoporosis and like all of these things and digestive issues, all of that. Um, I didn't understand that, oh, taking care of yourself is not destroying yourself like that's what I thought it was for years like no it's not it's actually me working with my body so again it's hard because I'm like I hear what they're saying of like hey all of a sudden like someone just completely disregards their health and just kind of goes along this path over there um I, w I wouldn't be putting rules and regulations and now I hate you and now we're gonna get divorced because of that. I think a loving partner is like, hey, how do we both prioritize our health and our um, energy levels and our nutrition? Like you would come at it from a very hopefully healthy, productive, empowering way and not a, I'm gonna put you on Weight Watchers and give you a scale. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I, I could speak to hours on this, um, but I'm going to save it for another video so that this doesn't become too long. But I hope you guys were just as shocked as I, and I hope you guys understand though that like, again, you value so much more than what you look like. And also your attractiveness and what you look like is so much more than your weight. <laughs> and that like you can present yourself in a very beautiful way at multiple different sizes and weights and that you don't have to be the size zero and have all the model measurements to be attractive and to be gorgeous and that <laughs> and I hope that you learn that men like this are trash trash I'm sorry you're saying that about your woman that's trash especially like online in a space like this no that's that's trash um I would never I would never accept that type of talk for my partner and I would never give him that type of talk, right? Like I wouldn't ever start body shaming him and being like, now you gotta start restricting yourself. Again, I go about health and I go about taking care of my health and um, being in a body that I love that feels fit and healthy and strong in a way different way. And I would you know, go about those conversations um, in a way different way. Um, and yeah. I just comments down below girls comments down below what are you thinking about this and um, I will see you guys next week in my next video make sure that you like this make sure that you subscribe for more content on how to just be a well-nourished woman that's it for me guys I will see you later